Hello friends. I'll be with you in just a minute. I'm trying to decide do I want my biggest marks to go that way or that way. Yeah, this way. Not sure why I think that, but that is indeed what I think. I have in my hands at the moment um, watercolor uh, sticks. They're quite broken by now. This is a Derwent watercolor stick about the size of a Conti crayon. For those of you who know what a Conti crayon looks like, for those of you who don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> All right, let's get official and legal. My name is Dan. <laughs> I'm kidding about the official part and the legal part, but not the my name is Dan part, that's true. All right, Dan Nelson Art Adventure number, Daily Art Adventure, I mean number 848. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> and uh, as you can see, I'm doing another, it's ironic, quite ironic that Last week and this week, I'm, I'm doing two cityscapes uh, on fairly large horizontal. This one's not quite as long as the last one. It's only three by five feet. And uh, because of the size of the canvas and the complexity of the subject matter, once again, here is the photograph that I'm working from. And it, it has grid lines on it, therefore grids here and so forth. I actually started this painting um, early November. So how many months ago was that? Four months ago. And it's been sitting here in my studio ever since, just waiting for the chance to get invited to the dance. So today is finally the day. And for any of you, hello, light blue. <laughs> Taking my name in vain, I see. It's bad. It's so funny. I'm a bad, terrible typist, and so often, not not infrequently, when I'm typing, and I type my name, at, it comes out damn, D-A-M-N. I mean, like the real damn word. <laughs> um, so th what I'm doing again today is unusual from my normal. Normally, I the very first thing I put on a canvas is abstract marks. So both last week and this week, exception to the rule both times, where I, I've drawn the image first, and then I'm doing abstract marks. Now at the moment, I'm trying to decide whether I want to start with brushes or rags. I think I'm going to go with rags. I, I'm, I say one thing and mean the other. I'm going to start with brushes. So let me explain a little bit, just in case there's any new arrivals here. Explain this, the crazy idea. I think it's crazy. The, the idea of starting out a painting by making bold, bodacious, irrational abstract marks is, as I say, irrational. Um, I didn't used to do this. I don't know when I started, um, it has grown and developed over the last several years, but I think probably it would be safe to say in the last three years for sure is when this started developing, uh, but it has taken on more importance and it's become more prominent, my, my abstract marks. and. I, I, it's just something, it is just something that I uh, evolved into little by little. Didn't know, you know, what was happening when it started, but then found myself liking the effect. 
So let me give you a little bit of rationale. I don't know anybody else that starts a painting this way, that essentially does, you could say, a complete, even though it's simple, but still, a complete abstract painting underneath a representational painting. Okay, so that's kind of unusual. I think it's safe to say, kind of unusual. And, wow, this, just look at, look at how beautiful this is. <laughs> just, just that kind of stuff right there. <laughs> you, you, I like to, you can't make that stuff up. It just, the best you can do is create an environment where accidents like that can happen. I'm going to keep painting, again, still in the abstract mode here. Um, but I'll, again, try to explain a little bit why I'm doing what I'm doing. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm just going to do some white paint. It just changed my mind. Um, I need to put, don't know if I've ever done this before. I've got two pencils in each hand. Black pencils. As I said, what might have been slightly timid a couple years ago is now, as you can see, downright violent. All right, now some white. So let me try to give you some broad philosophical parameters. By philosophical, I, I don't mean Descartes, Kant, Spinoza. <laughs> what I mean when I use the word philosophical in this sense, I mean the, the underlying concept behind what I'm doing, um, the why. Which, well, anyway. Never mind. I'll resist the temptation to get philosophical for the moment. All right, the why. Um, one way to describe it is I was painting about 20 years ago. I can, I can almost remember the uh, the painting I was working on. I probably could remember it if I worked really hard. When suddenly I had this realization. And I actually wrote it down at the time. I said, the best painting happens when you're trying to do something else. Another way to put that, Bob Ross's, far and away his best quote, best artistic quote, Bob Ross, happy little accidents. I, I, I was in the middle of painting, and back in those days, I was in the first half of my art journey, for sure. I was painting stuff that looked like stuff. I was painting fairly tight, accurate realism, okay? That's important to know. When suddenly I had this revelation opened up to me that the best painting happens when you're trying to do something else. And I don't mean by that when you're trying to go make a ham sandwich. That's not what I mean. I mean the best painting, the best mark on the cam canvas happens without your permission, without you trying, because while you're trying to do something else on the canvas, something accidentally happens. And then now again, I'll, I'll pull in um, Bob Ross's great quote, happy little accidents. Um, so those two, one reality, same, same reality reflected in two different phrases. And as I said, it, it suddenly a light bulb came on and I realized this, is, this was really, really true. I wasn't, I wasn't uh, trying to impress anybody, nobody was listening to me, it wasn't, it was just all of a sudden I went, oh my goodness. 
it's the accidents in painting that are the best part of your painting. Now to back up just a little bit, some of you regulars, if you've heard me say in the last year or two, Uh, yes, uh, Lake Blue, this is a Sanyi easel, S-A-N-Y-I, Sanyi professional, but the bad news is I don't think they make them anymore. It's electric, has a motor, go up and down and backward and forward. Got it through Jerry's Artorama. They may still have them on, in the catalog, I'm not sure. So. All of a sudden, I realized that the best painting happened when I was trying to do something else. So then my, my thought, my next thought was, well, it's a little bit like um, this joke, this old joke, don't, if you haven't heard it, uh, uh, that's all right. The old joke is, if the black box always survives the plane crash, then why don't we all ride in the black box? <laughs> it's a joke, it's silly, of course. <laughs> if it's funny, it's only funny because of its irony. Um, but I, I applied that, that sort of kind of thinking. It was a very small step for me. If the best, if I truly believed, which I did, suddenly I was completely convinced, and this was my transition. This was the moment of my transition, I think more than any other. This was the moment of my transition from first half of art journey to second half of art journey. But uh, using the black box airplane kind of logic, if the best painting is what happens when you're trying to do something else, then why not? always do something else. You with me? Bingo. So that's exactly what I started doing. Now that, that philosophy, that mindset has shifted and has colored and shifted my painting. It was from first half of Art Journey to second half. Um, it's, it's shifted the way my thinking um, completely. If the best painting happens, realism painting, Representational painting. If the best representational painting happens when you're doing something else, why not do something else all the time? So in a sense, that describes my painting process. And why would I start? Now, this, this particular thing developed late in the process, but... And hang on here. I think I'm going to continue painting. Now, so, so the, the name of this particular broadcast was... that was that uh, wild and crazy um, abstract layer, right? Um, but that is now finished. I'm done with the abstract layer. But I have to wait for a lot of stuff to dry. So while I am waiting for it to dry, I'm just going to go ahead and start doing some white because I can do... Um, I can do a white in wet. I can't do wet in white. <laughs> Let me say that more accurately. I cannot do wet into wet white. <laughs> I'm saying it correctly, believe it or not. But I can do wet white into wet. <laughs> All right. It sounds like I'm making some kind of weird, maybe naughty joke, but I'm not, I promise. Um, Let me describe again, and I, I won't keep this broadcast going terribly long because I gave it a, a topic and I, I want to stick with, make the topic real, but I'll, I'll talk just for a few more minutes. This is, can be very, very even frightfully important for, for many early journey painters to get a handle on. Um, I forgot what I was going to say exactly, but that's right. I'll say this instead. Um, the way I paint then, 
and this has been growing for the last 15, 16 years, is all of my underpainting, all of the underpainting stages. One of my chief goals is to create enough chaos so that I have lots to respond to in the final edit, particularly the final edit layer, which of course comes hours from now or 12 uh, or 13, no, no, nine or 10, I should be more honest, nine or 10 layers from now is, is when um, I get into the final edit layer. But in the final edit layer, I want a lot of energy on the canvas. That's a good way to put it. I want a lot of energy on the canvas so that I don't have to be inventing interesting marks out of whole cloth, to use that expression. That is, there, there will already be a lot of stuff on the canvas um, to which I can respond. Again, so let me just more for, for, for the one of you, the two of you who care. <laughs> let, me, let me continue. Um, I often say, and it sounds like I'm being like humble or, or overstating the case, but I really am not. When I say I'm not smart enough to paint good, and English majors just, just zip it for a minute. I'm using the bad grammar so that I can achieve a parallelism, which won't work if I use good grammar. I'm not smart enough to paint good, but I am, by golly, I am smart enough to spot some good painting when I see it. Do you see the difference? One is inventing a good stroke out of thin air, so to speak. That's good painting. And I, and I say, I'm not smart enough to paint good. I'm exaggerating slightly because I can paint good to some degree, but not good enough. But I am smart enough in the final edit layer when I'm going along -dum 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 -dum, painting realism, right? At that, at that stage, at that phase of my painting, I'm definitely you know, up to my elbows in representational painting, right? So when I am in that stage, that phase, hang on just a second. I've got something not in the right place here. I hate it when that happens. <laughs> so my drawing is off. I just discovered that. All right. Uh, when I'm in the final edit layer, during which time I'm using primarily opaque paint, um, I'll be painting along and all of a sudden I will see a mark. I'll just leave it at that. I'll see a mark that, again, to exaggerate, that is to die for. <laughs> that is just like breathtakingly perfect and gorgeous and uh, it, that mark, whichever, whichever mark I'm talking about, will be the result of six, seven, or eight, or nine layers, one of which, or two of which, are, or three of which now are, I'm on the third layer right now, maybe the fourth. Anyway, it's all these, all these abstract impulses and layers underneath the, the um, final edit realism. So there would be magical bits of texture and color that, that will appear underneath the realism or the picture, if you will, that, I, that I'm painting. And again, the feeling, definitely, the feeling will definitely be, wow, I never would have put that mark there on purpose. But now that it is there, I'm sure as heck am not going to cover it up. That's what I mean by I'm not smart enough to paint good, but I am smart enough when I, when I see a little dab, a little stroke of good color, say, 
I am smart enough to go, ooh, don't mess with that. That is beautiful. All right, does that make sense? So again, I'm just explaining why do I start my paintings with this crazy abstract layer. Well, I've just described that to you in several, several different ways of putting it. And I've just about worn out my verbiage doing that. So I'm not going to force myself to keep this broadcast going on longer and longer and longer. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'll paint for a few more minutes, even though clearly I'm hoping you can see that what I'm doing right now is is one of the um, is one of the drawing layers of the painting process. If this is one of the careful or literal, sometimes I use the word literal, this right now, what I'm doing right now, by putting um, white paint, I'm looking at my photograph, just down there, right? And thank goodness I already have a, you know, a fairly accurate um, sketch, I guess would be the, the best word, a fairly accurate sketch of the, uh, of this cityscape is already there, so it helps me a great deal. But with these white marks, I'm, I'm doing quite a bit of def definition, right? Um, so I'll, I'll end this broadcast here, short, this particular broadcast here shortly, and I'll probably paint for just a little while without your company, but I promise to, unless something extraordinary happens, I'll be back in just a little while to continue this painting, but with a completely different topic. All right, let me take just a few more minutes. Ah, I, I say this often, but let me repeat it again, again, just in case there are, there are any, any newbies, any newcomers here on the channel. Welcome very much. If there are, good to have you here. Glad you're here. Um, make it. I want to make it clear that I have virtually no idea which of my abstract marks are going to be extant, are going to be visible in the finished painting. No idea. Not my job to worry about it. What is my job is just to make sure that whichever abstract marks I have put on the canvas they are pleasant marks. So they're, as you can see, they're pretty colors, <laughs> right? I mean, I, I could do brown and gray. Brown and gray is pretty in its own way. But uh, in this case, I, I want fairly bright colors. Um, the main description, and you've already discerned this amply, is that the, the marks that I make, and this is very, very typical of me, that my abstract marks are bold, strong, and long. There, I've never said it that way before. That, that fits pretty well, right? My abstract marks are bold, strong, and long. Um, I won't take a, an entire detour, but I'll do a real quick detour. Um, I have a teaching. It's about time for me to, to do it again, by the way. It's, I'm re it's, it's ready to come out of retirement, ready to be repeated. Um, it's called Six Categories of Abstract Painting. It's not a full orbed, ex well, no it is. I'm gonna say, yeah, it is. So, <laughs> heck, I'm gonna say it is. It's a full orbed class on how to do um, abstract painting, right? But I, I tackle the subject by basically dividing the categories of abstract painting or breaking abstract painting down into six categories, all right? And, um, one of the categories, I need to post this document on my, on my uh, YouTube community page. So I'll try to remember to do that here shortly. But one of the categories is called kinesthetic abstract painting. The word kinesthetic refers to movement, bodily, move, bodily movement of hands and arms and so on and so forth. And... Um, that is just one category 
of abstract painting where it relies heavily for its effect. It relies heavily on the bold, strong, and long or violent marks. Mine are not violent. They're bold, strong, and long, but they're not very violent. Uh, the, the bold, strong, and long movements or marks, movements that, that the artist has made. All right. So that's just one category of abstract painting. And um, it's one of my favorite categories. In other words, pretty much all my abstract painting contains a strong element of kinesthesia. <laughs> contains it reflects a strong understanding of the power of the kinesthetic movement All right so again so what you see here is one way to do abstract which is based on bold strong and long movements in this case because bold strong and long movements look good uh, again I don't want to take a complete detour but enough to say you can't do um, you cannot do make beautiful marks with ugly movements that's one of my favorite quotes let me say so favorite I'm gonna say it again you cannot make beautiful marks with ugly movements in order to and, and many of you early journey painters you really need to listen to that um, that's what you need you need to get away from <laughs> mealy-mouthed, <laughs> timid, insecure. Of course you're insecure because you don't know what you're doing, but just fake it till you make it. Just act like you're bold <laughs> until you are. Um, all right, I think I'm actually going to stop right there. And let me tell you where I think I'm going. I'll go back and read your chats here in a minute. Um, I'm not entirely happy with my bold, long, and strong movements because they're not bold enough. The reason was I had too much water on my brush, so what was a strong red has drained down and left me kind of with a weak pink. That yellow is okay, but this yellow is not. So I may actually do a, a second later on, though. I'll do a second whack at abstract. And again, I'm sorry I didn't explain this. If the sky is going to be blue, which this is going to be a daytime scene, if the sky is blue, then most of my abstract up here is anti-blue, red and yellow. The city, on the other hand, is mostly warm colors, like most cities, brick and concrete and so on and so forth, with the exception of that building, which is blue. But most of these buildings are warm-ish, and they have a slightly warm sun on them. So I've done blue underneath the warm part of the painting and warm underneath the cool part, blue part of the painting up there. Does that make sense? Um, I think what I'm probably going to do next, and I, I, I won't broadcast, I'll just, I won't broadcast much of this because it's too tedious. I'm going to draw with brushes and paint, um, redraw the, the, the city here, the drawing that's here, uh, with, again, various colors. And I'll, I might bring you in for the last stages of that because that's probably so I'm going to ch I'm I'm tell you I'm changing my agenda for the day a little bit it'll probably take me an hour of drawing I'm guessing maybe not anyway so I, I won't bring you in until the end of that and then we'll go from there to the next step which will be some washes on top of that all right thank you guys for watching and thanks for chatting and since you all have been kind enough to say hi I'll say hi back to you thanks so much light blue <laughs> Hello, Uncle Sixty. <laughs> You're late. I'd be embarrassed if I was you. <laughs> Thanks for joining me again. Do art savvy people buy art? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> No, Uncle, this is for, oh, this is for, um, thanks for asking, interesting. Um, I started this outside in the drive, in the uh, parking lot at Art of the Carolinas, just as a demo. And I thought I would paint on it for three days during Art of the Carolinas back in November. And uh, 
but on day two, I got a commission <laughs> for money. So I abandoned this painting and went with the commission piece. Um, this painting, Lord willing, is going to be auctioned off at a fundraiser this Saturday. Um, and I'll talk more about that later. It's an art fundraiser, an, an, a fundraiser for an art organization I've participated in every year for, nearly every year for 18 years, maybe 17 years. Um, I'll talk more about that later. And I get 50%, so I'm happy to, to say. It is a job, Uncle. Hello, Stein. You're very welcome. Thanks for speaking up. All right, so I'm going to bid you all a fond to do. Nice short broadcast. Can you believe it? You all go back to work. Uncle, go back and paint. Light blue, go back and paint. Susan, go back and paint. <laughs> we'll, we'll meet up here again in 45 minutes or an hour or something like that. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>